of our favorite aspects of Thor-inspired visuals is toying around with compositing electric effects, which have all kinds of uses and have been used in countless films. Of course, late last year, we released our own electric pack of visual effects assets to our Trying Digital store, and for the promo for that, we created a few shots inspired by a number of Thor scenes. So for these effects that we're showing today, we're gonna be using assets from our electric pack, although the same general process will work no matter what you use. But if you do want our pack, we're making it 50% off from right now until July 25th, because why not? To start, this shot was a recreation of this moment from Thor Ragnarok. We'll mainly be referencing the trailer version of the shot throughout this, as the movie version is slightly different. You can see it's pretty flat and underexposed, but the benefit of that is the effects and the light interaction will be much more visible and have a stronger impact than if the scene was well lit. So with this in mind, we shot our footage of Justin in front of a green screen, slowly standing up into frame. We used a couple of lights on either side for a bit of highlight detail, which we can use later for some light interaction. But other than that, we kept the front of him pretty low lit. In After Effects, we're gonna drop the footage into a new comp. We'll start by creating a few null layers to use for some tracks. We wanted to add some glowing eyes, so we'll use the built-in motion tracker placed over an eye and track throughout the shot, then apply a null. We'll do the same for the other eye. And then for this particular effect, we also wanted a few other tracks of his face and body, such as shoulders, nose, or details like a collar or button for us to link the electricity and light interaction to later. Once we've applied each track to a null and renamed to match, we can key our footage. For this, we'll mask around Justin to isolate him and use the key light effect. We've colored key light in previous tutorials, but this is a very easy key, so we'll speed through. And we can use the advanced spill suppressor to despill any green. For the background, we're using this render we made for a different project a while ago, but thought it fit pretty well for a shot like this. And we can add the lens blur effect to knock it out of focus. Using a curves effect will really lower the brightness of Justin, both to closer match our environment and the low exposure of the original Thor shot. Then using another curves to alter the color slightly and a tint to desaturate. To make some Thor style glowing eyes, we can create a new solid and make it white, hide the visibility and use the ellipse tool to draw a circle mask covering the iris. Then a bigger one to cover the rest of the eye. Use the pen tool to draw a third mask for the outer shape of the eye, re-enable visibility and set the third mask to intersect. In the second mask drop down, lower the opacity and then feather each mask. Changing the expansion of the second mask can alter the look and you can change the first mask placement if you want your actor to look in a different direction. Link to the corresponding tracked null for that eye, enable motion blur and set the blending mode to screen. Use a solid composite effect to set to black, then add a fractal noise effect. Set the blending mode to multiply, boost the brightness and under transform, lower the scale and then press alt and click on the evolution stopwatch. Type the expression time, asterisk 100 to give it some animation. Next, as usual, we'll wanna use Red Giant's optical glow, but you can use the After Effects glow too. We just prefer the look that this one gives us. Lastly, use a curves to add the color of your choice. We're going with an electric blue. Duplicate the solid for the other eye and link to the other eye track. Right click, transform and flip horizontal, then move the mask over and tweak them if needed. Next up, we start adding in those electricity assets, but before we do, Motion Array is a lot of things all in one. The most obvious thing is their massive library of assets like video templates, stock footage, photos, music, and sound effects. Like if we dive into templates here, you can sort by After Effects, Premiere, Resolve, Final Cut, and more. And you have these great fully built out templates that you can get in and customize for your own project. And you can filter down to find exactly what you need here, like look for just lower thirds, for example. And you'll find everything from a nice clean corporate look to more fun and creative ideas. Then you have presets for all kinds of different effects like color filters, light leaks, and glitches. Of course, we could search through all of this on the site easily enough, but they also have great extension panel for Premiere and After Effects. With this, you get a motion array panel right inside of Premiere that has all of their assets inside of it. So you don't need to open your browser at all. You shift through everything right here and easily try things out until you find the right one. Then download and import right here. Now that side of it is great, but there's still more that they've added in to make Motion Array incredibly cool. First are their plugins. This is a bunch of transitions and effects to use inside of Premiere. Download and install, then find them in your effects folder. Then you can just drag on like one of the many transition effects. Then you have something that I didn't expect, a great collaboration tool that comes with the subscription. You can upload your work to send and receive notes to help 
with remote work. And then another thing you definitely wouldn't expect is a site builder, a really solid one. In their portfolio builder, you can make your own site to show off your work and use a custom URL to make it fully yours and pro. They have a little bit of almost everything. It is really well-rounded. For subscriptions, you have annual, which saves you some cash, or monthly so you can grab it when you need or only on a per project basis. And these are all universal licenses to cover you for whatever you're working on. So definitely jump in the links below and check this one out. The wide range of benefits it comes with is perfect for content creators. Logo. For the electricity in this shot, we're gonna be using the arcs and extras categories. We have both a version of the pack with baked in glows, as well as a pack version without. For this tutorial, we're gonna be using the version without the glows to give us more customization. We'll drop an asset into our comp and set the blending mode to screen. Use the anchor point tool to move the anchor to one of the electric contact points. Change position, scale, and rotation how you like, and link to the closest tracked null for that area. In the original Thor shot, the electricity only lasted a few frames at a time for each strand, so we can trim the layer to match. You can either leave it to suddenly vanish when it cuts off like some of the originals do, or you can use a vector blur and keyframe the amount to increase over time the last couple of frames to make it thinner, as well as a curves effect, setting a keyframe and again moving to the last frame and darkening it to add a subtle transition before it cuts. You can also use a mask with some feather and keyframe that to move in the same direction of the electric flow. Now duplicate and if you click on a different asset and hold Alt while dragging it over the duplicated layer and let go, it will replace it. Move the anchor point again if needed and change a position, rotation, and scale to a different spot. Link to another null and move it in the timeline. Repeat this as many times as you like. We're matching the original shot closely and have a decent number appearing consistently throughout the shot. If you use duplicates of the same asset, you can slide the time of the layer to choose a different section so that none of these are looking identical. For some, we also slowed down and enabled frame blending. And we now have this. Select all the track nulls and duplicate moving to the top of the comp. Link the eyes to the new eye track, then select all the electricity and original track nulls. Right click, pre-compose, move all attributes to the new comp. Copy the solid composite glow and color effects from the eyes and paste it on the new electricity comp. Then change any settings until you're happy with the results. We ended up swapping out the curves for a tint and color vibrance to get a slightly different look. If you want want brighter areas at the contact points, you can duplicate the electric comp and inside of each asset, use a mask set to subtract and feather so that we only keep the start and end points like this. In the main comp, duplicate the electricity and click, drag, and replace with the new comp. Change the effects to make these points as bright as you want, and to get some anamorphic flares like in the original, you can duplicate again and delete all but the color effects. Using the After Effects Glow, we'll set dimensions to horizontal, lower threshold, increase radius and intensity, and change the color to be a strong blue, switching to A and B colors. Use a fast box blur if you want to soften them, and moving the color vibrance to last allows better control for brightness. And you can always change these settings to make them more subtle. One of the key steps for grounding any bright effect like lightning and electricity is having interactive lighting inside of your scene or on your environment or subject, and there is a few ways to do this. The best is to use practical light on set. If the effect is going to be pretty static, or with consistent light emission like these examples, we've shown in the past that practical lighting is easy. Just have a light, often colored to match the effect that you're gonna be adding in post and aim it at your actor for the correct angle. However, with a shot like this, where the light would be emitting for a few frames at a time from a variety of different angles, the only real way to get this practically during a shoot would be setting up multiple lights set to flash on and off at different moments. This would be tough even if you had a lot of lights and hands to make it work and the flash flashes would likely need to be random rather than synced. Another technique is to use a CG double. For instance, we could use Element 3D in a generic human model, which lines up with Justin surprisingly well. Although, if you have a 3D scan of your actor, this would work even better. If you use an After Effects light, you can isolate the lighting in Element by changing the physical environment lighting influence to 100 and the color to black, then set the layer to screen. This does have a cool look and could possibly work for certain areas. You could even warp sections to closer match the actor, although this would be better done to the actual model itself. However, as soon as you get some areas such as the hair or beard, the costume, it quickly falls apart and would really require an accurate digital 
will double in the correct costume with better shaders and hair to get a good enough look. So instead, what we found best for this shot was to actually shoot a separate plate where we switched off all the lights in the studio and using an iPhone flashlight, we lit Justin for all the different angles while he stood still. We could drop this light past footage beneath the electricity comp and we're gonna focus on this asset first. We'll just drag the footage through the timeline until we find a moment where the practical lighting syncs up close enough to look like a mission from the asset and we can mask this area with a high feather. Set the blending mode to screen and reposition to closer line up with our main footage. Use a tent for some desaturation, a curves effect to crush the shadows and lift the highlights, and another to add our matching blue color, and we can use Liquify to warp the areas to closer line up with our main footage. Link to the closest track, null, and trim to only appear for the same length of frames as the electricity. You can keyframe things like curves to change the intensity as the asset starts and ends. Also, depending on the motion of your practical light, you can keep it in with moving direction and shadow or right click and freeze frame. We then did this for each area close to the electricity. We also did the same for the area around his eyes to ground and enhance that glow effect. We can also use a duplicate of our key, mask this area where we have some light hitting him, set to screen and change the curves to utilize the real highlights we have in the footage. This whole step is definitely a tedious process, but I definitely think it helps embed the effect more into the scene and the benefits we are getting is full control over the strength of the light interaction as well as color if the look or design was to change in post. But eventually we have this. To complete it, we added an adjustment layer with some more blue tinted glow above everything, some lens stock footage and a final grade giving us this. And as always, you can try different colors or assets to switch up the look. We use the same technique for this shot here. Once again, shooting the main plate, this time without a green screen, as well as a take using an iPhone at various angles and masking sections of the light pass to match our electric assets and crushing the contrast. Only this time crushing more as we couldn't block the ambient light in the room. Also because of the movement of the fingers, we needed to keyframe the liquify frame by frame to match. But eventually we get this. If you're using CG objects, or characters, it's a lot easier as you just use CG lights to match. We made this shot in Element 3D and using spotlights, we can get precise positions, angles, and brightness to our liking, and then just trim or keyframe brightness to just the frames with our electricity visible, as well as the position to match the motion of the assets. For these shots in particular, we also use the lens stock asset also included in our electric pack to help emphasize the brightness of the effects, and it can also give a bit of a volumetric feel too. This shot was inspired by this moment in Thor Ragnarok with electricity coming from him as he leaps through the sky. We first shot our base sky footage and in our electric pack, we also included a number of sky and cloud assets, which we set to screen and place throughout the timeline in different positions in the sky to add some lightning flashes. The character is a 3D model and we used a free stock clip of a flag blowing in the wind, which worked well as a cape. For the electricity, we used the dispersed seven an asset as the main and a combination of Disperse 6 and Impact 10 for additional elements to get this, then finished with glow, lens, and color effects. This slow motion shot, also obviously inspired by this awesome Thor Ragnarok moment, was done using Strand 7 asset slowed down. Placed in line and direction of our character and using an animated mask to isolate only the section behind him. Then use multiple duplicates moving throughout the timeline and changing the anchor to switch up the look for each each one. One of the other benefits of using the assets without glow baked in is instead of having it placed beneath the character layer, you can place it above and use a set matte effect, choosing our character with the effects and masks, inverting to cut them out, then placing this effect first, making the glow wrap in front of them, giving a more natural look. This shot we didn't get a chance to finish in time to include in the promo last year, but we wanted to show it here as it was inspired by this great Thor shot from Infinity War. Once again, Again, this was made in Element 3D and Mixamo for the character landing animation. We made our electric asset in 3D layers to place them in the correct locations. Because this is a really busy shot, we found it easier to categorize the different elements we use. So we have the strikes placed over our character as well as around the scene in different 3D positions and randomly dotted around the timeline to appear at various moments. Near the character and ground, we use the Disperse 6 and 13 assets as well as 
a few ground assets, plus Surface 1 and Spread 2. Arcs 12 and 13 were used for these large arcs traveling out from our character, and we placed some more cloud flashes in the sky like before with the After Effects lights flashing at the same time on the distant environment, as well as spotlights tinted blue and keyframe to appear in sync with the strikes and arc assets for light interaction in the foreground. We also used some smoke assets, including ones from our smoke pack placed around the scene and keyframed them to get brighter and more blue on certain frames to imply the electricity lighting up the atmosphere around it. As always, we finished up with some glow and lens effects as well as some camera shakes this time, giving us this. And lastly, for the title, we used cluster three at the start and ground five assets for these accents on the title as well as lens flashes four and five to fill out the frame. But there you have it, a few useful techniques that you can take to your own project. And if you do use our electric pack for any kind of work, we'd love to see it. So tag us on our socials, which you can find below. But that's it for today. If you aren't subscribed, consider doing so and hit the bell to be notified when we put up more content. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.